Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Hey Santee, can you do a video on the cowboy Nat Love? Joshua Barnett. Nat Love, oh yeah. Yeah, we can do that. When we talk about African American cowboys, many people show confusion on their face. Maybe because Hollywood westerns don't actually show their sheer numbers in the Old West properly. The first outfit this week's subject was hired on had a bunch of black cowboys. Let's investigate. Nat Love was born on a plantation in Davidson County, Tennessee in June of 1854. At the end of the Civil War, he and his family rented a cabin and some land from their previous master and struggled to make ends meet. After his father died and left a teenage Nat the man of the house, he started breaking horses for 10 cents a piece. At age 15, he struck out to find his own way and got a job as a cowboy with an outfit heading back to Texas after a cattle drive. Their home ranch was owned by the Duvall family and they nicknamed him Red River Dick. Don't worry, that unfortunate nickname would change later on. Nat stayed with them until 1872 and then was hired on at the Gallinger Ranch in Arizona for more pay. There he excelled as a brand reader, which kept him busy traveling up to 100 miles a day on horseback. This is where he gets into most of his adventures, which include getting captured by Chief Yellow Dog and escaping on horseback making 100 miles in 12 hours without a saddle. A pill in an ice storm. Backwards. Okay, just kidding about that last part. This is just stupid. Now, most of this information comes from Nat Love's own words in his autobiography called, and prepare yourself for this, <gasps> The Life and Adventures of Nat Love, better known in the cattle country as Deadwood Dick by himself, a true history of slavery days, life on the great cattle ranges and on the plains of the wild woolly west based on facts and personal experiences of the author. <gasps> <sighs> Shame he couldn't have used a longer title. Like many of these Westerners, the man was prone to exaggerations, and some of his timetable is a little off. He mentioned that on his first cowboy job in 1869, the boss bought him a new Colt revolver chambered in 45. That would be a neat trick since those didn't come out until 1873. He claims to have shared drinks with Billy the Kid, who was also hired on by his employer for 11 months. I'll make you famous. Nat also brags that he could outdrink any man he ever met in the cattle country. Go for it, man. Drink with me. Two days gone by. After his cowboying career, Nat ended up in Denver, Colorado, where he was a Pullman porter for the railroad. Years later, he moved to Los Angeles, where he wrote that autobiography we mentioned. Nat Love passed away in 1921 probably as a result of writing that long title years prior. Okay, that was, that was uncalled for. I'm sorry. A 2021 movie called The Harder They Fall is a fictional telling of Nat's adventures, putting him in the company of other African-American Old Westians, Jim Beckworth, Bill Pickett, Stagecoach Mary, and a host of others. It's a fun watch, but just know history never places all these greats together. We can die, but we're not gonna die. Stop lightning with the blam blams. Admit it. Lightning with the blam blams. Hmm. Is this chick back yet? Whether or not Nat Love had all the adventures he claimed, there is one thing we can be sure of. He was a cowboy and a damned good one. A true Western icon and one I would love to toss back a drink with. A man drink like that and he don't eat. He is going to die. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. Oh, this week on Patreon, I got to handle a Colt single action army first generation from 1880. Oh, yeah. We're going to get some coverage on that in the future. All right. As always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. <laughs>